Hello everyone and welcome to this vector ink tutorial where I will show you how to take a sketch and turn it into a vector logo using vector ink's path builder tool to first trace over the sketch and then we'll use vector ink's color palette generator to find the right color palette for our logo and then using the gradient tool to apply a beautiful color and thus producing a beautiful vector logo in the end. So to follow along, head over to vectorink.io forward slash app and tap on new document. And if you want to follow along with the same image, the link to this image will be in the description. Just tap on the link, right click and save the image onto your hard drive. Then in Vectorink, you're going to tap on the top left menu here, the menu button and tap on import and find your image and import the image into the canvas. And then from here, you're gonna tap on the image to select it. And I'm going to scale the image down so that way it's within the canvas. Right now it's blown up. So I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna tap on the top right handle so that way there's only one handle. That way we can scale it down proportionally. I'm gonna bring it to the size of the canvas. And then once I have this, I'm going to go into my alignment panel here and I'm going to center this image to the middle of the canvas using the uh, align to center uh, horizontally and vertically options. I'm going to exit out of that and then I'm going to head over to my layers panel. And I'm going to tap on layer one twice and then you're going to see your raster here, the image. Tap on the gear icon to open up the properties. And then we're going to turn down the opacity. And then tap on save. That way we can see what we're doing and the lines aren't, aren't interfering with what we're going to be putting over the image. And then we're going to tap on the lock to lock this in place. So that way it doesn't move. So we can click on it, we can drag on it, and nothing happens. So from here, I'm going to zoom in and let's start tracing our image. So to begin tracing something like this, first, we want to see what we're dealing with here. You see, we have straight lines and we have rounded corners. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the line tools. And the circle tools. To trace over these and then we're going to select everything and use a path builder tool to go over the intersections between the line tool and the circle tool so let's get started first let's select the circle tool so i'm going to tap on the rectangle tool i'm going to tap on it again to bring up the other shape tools you're going to see the circle here and tap on the circle tool okay and then Tap on constrain here in the bottom left, or if you're using a computer or a laptop, you can hold shift and we're going to place a circle on the canvas. It can be any size for now. From there, you're going to go back to the selection tool and making sure that we're scaling proportionally. You can do so again by tapping on this top right handle here. We're going to want to scale the circle down. That way it is the size of We'll start down here at the bottom, this bottom curve. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And you want to make sure that the circle, the curvature of the circle matches the curvature of the bottom curve of the logo, all right, of the sketch. Now from here, we're going to tap on the circle, and then we're going to tap Duplicate to duplicate the circle. And then we're going to drag it up. That way, it is matching the curvature of this shape here on the logo. All right. And we want the circle to be lined up with this line here. Okay, we want these circles to be lined up together right here. Okay, now from here, we want to 
go ahead and add our lines. So let's tap on the circle tool and tap on it again and select the line tool. And then we're going to place a line going up this way. Now the line is automatically going to snap at a 45 degree angle. And this image here is basically a 45 degree angle. So I am going to stick with this angle. Okay, and then I'm going to al align the circles so that way they both touch this line enough so we can uh, create our shape. But before I do that, I'm going to select everything, right? Tap and hold, tap and drag, and highlight all three shapes. And then we're going to tap on the stroke panel, and we're going to deselect scaling strokes. And then exit out of there. And what this is going to do is it's not going to allow the strokes, the stroke sizes to scale. So we can zoom all the way in and see how close these shapes actually are without, without the stroke scaling up. Okay. So I'm going to bring this circle right here to be just touching the line like so. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same for this circle. We want it to just be touching the line. Now let's tap on the line and duplicate that. Then we're gonna bring this duplicated line up to this part of the logo here. Okay, so we should have two lines running parallel at a 45 degree angle like so. Now, we need to do these lines here. So, being that these lines are already placed and the distance has been set, I'm going to tap on both. So, I'm going to tap on this one. I'm going to select the select multiple option here. Then I'm going to tap on this one. Okay, so both lines should be selected, and then we're going to tap on duplicate to duplicate them both. Okay, then what we want to do is flip them. So you can open up, you can use a shortcut flip horizontal option here, or flip X, flip on the X axis, or open up the object properties and tap it here. And then we're going to bring this down and line this up here. Like so. Now, you notice the circles are not touching. Okay, what we don't want to do is have this one, have this, the distance between these not match the distance between these two lines. We want them to be uniform. Okay, and now the circles aren't touching. So this is going to happen sometimes when we're dealing with sketches. Your lines are not going to be perfect, and you're going to run into um, inconsistencies like this. Okay? What we're going to do is move this circle down to meet this one. Okay, we're going to adjust this one up a little bit. Now, we do want these circles to be the same size as well. Okay, so I don't want to increase the size of this one without increasing the size of this one. So we want to keep the circles the same. That way everything is uniform. Okay. So let's start by adjusting the position of this one to meet the line. Because what, what, what I have is the circle is overlapping the line a little bit. So I'm going to bring this up right here. That way it's just touching the line. And then for this one, I'm going to bring it down to meet the lines. So zoom in, make sure it meets the line. And for this one, we're going to come in and make sure it meets the line. Okay, it doesn't have to touch the line, right? These shapes don't have to actually touch each other. All right, the Path Builder tool we'll be able to determine whether or not we're close enough to make up, to be merged together, okay? And that's close enough right there. So now what I want to do is I want to take one of these circles and I want to duplicate it. And I want to bring it over here. Tap on 
to match this curvature. And then I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to do the same for the top portion. And these curves appear to be, what we're going to do is we're going to line this up. We're going to line it up with this line here. That way it, it's not overlapping. We don't want to have any overlap. So I'm going to line this up with this line right here. Let's get as close as we can. Doesn't have to actually touch. But that will work. And then we'll do the same over here. All right, we have our shape traced with our circles and our lines. Now, what we want to do is open up the fill color and let's open up the color palette generator and let's find a color palette. Now there's two ways of doing this, actually, Three ways of doing this you can if you have a color palette that you like already you can import it using the import image here and it'll find the colors from the color palette and create the color palette from the image the other way is to randomly go through the mass of color palettes that um, exist in the vectoring database and it'll produce a bunch of uh, color palette possibilities for you okay and then another option is to go through Vectoring's color palette library, okay, which is what we will do. All right, so I'm going to come through here and I'm going to find a color palette and I want it to be an array of blues, like this one here. See what else there is. I like this one here, pink to blue. I'm going to select this one, I'm going to close this. And what I want to do is I want to have a light color and a darker color. Okay, now these colors are fine, but I'm not going to use these purples in the middle, so I'm going to delete these. This blue is fine. I'm going to delete this one, but I want a darker blue. Also, so I'm going to add here, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to make this color black. Close that out, and then I'm going to press add again. That way I get a darker color. I'm going to press add again to see what else comes. I'm going to delete the black one, delete this one, and this works here. I like this blend of colors here, right? From light to medium to dark. Now let's get out of here. Let's use the Path Builder tool. Let's highlight everything. I'm going to use the Path Builder tool to build out our shapes. So let's tap on the Path Builder tool. I'm going to tap on the pink color. And I'm going to color this bottom portion pink. And then I'm going to color this top portion this blue. And then we'll use the Gradient tool to blend everything together blend all the colors together. So I'm going to start highlighting this bottom portion. So right now I am using this path builder tool in auto mode. Okay. This is not join mode. Join mode is where you're, you tap on this pencil here and you can come through here and basically connect all of the paths individually. Okay. Auto mode is going to automatically find the paths. In auto mode, is, this is the default mode. It's going to automatically find the connections as you drag in between these, like so. Okay. And then once you have them all, release, and you should see a blue outline. Okay. I'll use join mode for this next piece here. So we're going to tap join mode. And I'm going to use the this middle blue color here. And I'm going to start highlighting these paths here.
like so. Okay. And see, now everything turns blue. Now let's tap out of here by selecting the selection tool. And so far, so awesome. So now, let's use the gradient tool to add a blend. We could stop right here. This is beautiful. But I want to use a gradient tool and add a shadow effect right here. So I want this to be light and this one to be dark right here. This side to be light, this side to be this darker blue right here. Right. And then over here, we'll do the same. This will be the, the, the lighter pink. And then this one is going to blend, blend into a darker, um, or into a blue on this side. Okay. So I'm going to select the start. Let's start with this, this shape here. Select this shape. And we're going to tap on the gradient here, linear gradient. Okay. So that applied a gradient. You may not see it much, but it did. What it did is it took the other side of the gradient and just darkened the original color. So if we come over here to the gradient tool, you'll see that our gradient is already applied. Okay, we have the original color, which is right here, this top handle. And this one is the darker color. Okay. But it all it did was darken the original color a little bit. I want to select this bottom handle here and select the darker blue that we have. All right, and let's bring this down here to the bottom. And I'm going to bring this down. That way, it's not, we don't want a big blend here. We want it to look like this pink shape is producing a shadow. So we want to have something like this, where the darker blue is barely visible and is poking out the, the, the uh, top of the pink shape, just like so. Okay, not too much. We want the effect to be subtle. And I'm going to select the pink shape, and I'm going to select the linear gradient also. And I'm going to select the gradient tool. And the top one is the original color. And the bottom one is going to be a darker color. But I want to try using this blue. And we get this effect where it looks like the blue is folding over into this pink here. And I want to do the same. I don't want the blue to take up too much. I want it to be subtle. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit. There we go. That way it looks like that That'll work. I want it to be just so it looks like this blue is folding over and then it turns into this pink here. Okay. So there we go. That looks good to me. And I will end it there. I'm going to hop over here to my layers. I'm going to remove the raster. I'm going to hide the raster by clicking on this eye, right, to turn off the visibility. Close the layers. Zoom in, and we have our abstract checkmark logo. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for following along. I hope you learned something. I hope you've found Vector Inc. to be useful if you're not using it. And I will catch you guys next time.